This video is part two of my introduction to lists in Python. And in it, I want to begin by making sure that you really understand some of what I said in the earlier video. What I said in the earlier video is that lists can contain as their elements any valid object in Python. And I want to show you what I mean by that so you don't misinterpret. So I'm going to begin here by just defining a function. So we use the def and then whatever function name we want, I'll just call it fn. And uh, my function is going to take two arguments, x and y. And um, it's going to do the following. It's going to return um, 3 times x squared plus 4 times y cubed. I'm not sure why I would ever want to do this, but um, let's do it anyway. And so it's going to return the value that I've created. And of course the statements in the function have to be indented or Python won't recognize this as a block of code. Okay, so I've defined a function. Now I can create lists with literally anything as their elements as long as they're valid Python um, objects. And so I'm going to create the following list. Uh, let's put in as the first element the number 1, as the second element a float, 2.36, as the third element a string, dog, as the fourth element uh, the function, fn. Um, as the fifth element, let's put in uh, a list. So the list in this case Let's just, so it's easy to type, let's just let it have some integers in it. But again, this list could have anything in it. Well, and uh, I could put a string in there. I already have with dog, but I could uh, put in the list of a string. And let's go ahead and quit with that. Now, I have my font size large here so that it's easy to see. And you can see that uh, the uh, line I've been typing has gone outside of the window. So I'm going to show you another thing you can do with lists. Uh, I can put uh, the list elements on different lines. So for example, I can do this. Now it has to be indented. And Python is going to recognize that because the list is not closed, um, each of these represents a new line. So let me go ahead and ex execute this and see if it really does what I'm telling you it does. So I'm going to highlight it and then press F9. Now the editor tries to help you out with syntax. And it does it by highlighting things in different colors and so on. But what I wanted to point out is that there's little this little symbol over here on the very left side that's telling me I've made a syntax error and I have in fact forgotten to close the quote on the string so anything so now it should actually work so I'm going to select all of this code and I have to remember to select the function because if I don't I haven't run anything yet it's not going to work and then I can execute this code by hitting F9. And there it is. First what happens is the function is defined and then the list is defined that should consist of one, 2.36, dog, the function, another list, and then yet another list. So let's now print out X and see what it looks like. Here is X. It consists of one, 2.36, the string dog, this funny thing in these angled brackets that's saying that there's a function defined called dot fn and then a list 3628 and anything which is a string and then we apply the list function to hello which we've seen in an earlier video converts hello into a list of individual letters so now I want to show you how I can reference these things and uh, I'm going to go ahead and move the console over here over the editor so that it's bigger. And the first thing is if I put in x0 
I should get the first element here, which is 1, since uh, Python begins indexing arrays with 0. So sure enough, I get 1. If I put in x1, I should get the float. So for example, if I do the type of x1, it should tell me that it's a float. Sure enough, it is. Um, x2 here, the third element is dog. And I know that in strings, I can reference individual letters with an index. So let's suppose I want to return the O here. The O is going to be the second element of dog or the index of number of one. So let's see, if I do x2, that should be referring to the string dog, and then one, that should refer to the letter O. So there it is. Of course, I could get the entire string dog just by going x2. If I put in x3, it should refer to the function. If I do that, it comes back and tells me that it's a function. But I ought to be able to execute this function by doing the following, referring to its element, x3, and then putting the open regular parentheses, because that says function to Python. And then I'll put in a couple of numbers, x for 2 and uh, 3 for y, and go ahead and hit Enter. And sure enough, it returns 120, which ought to be the value that the function should have taken on. And you can go back and check that that's the case. X has gone off the screen, so let me just print it again. So we, we have all of uh, X here. The fourth element, let me count it, one, two, three, four. No, the fifth element at index four is this second list that consists of integers and the string anything. So I ought to be able to refer to this by going x4, it's the fifth element, and if I go x4, I should get that list. And sure enough, out comes the list. If I wanted a part of this list, so for example, let's do a slice that captures this number two up through the anything, then I can just add that into the reference in a way which I hope is becoming obvious. Now the way a slice works is I put in the index of the first thing I want. This is the third element, so it has an index of two. And then I put in the one greater than the index of the last thing that I want. Okay, so if that's two, three, four, and then I should put in five. And now I should get a list that consists of the elements two, eight, and anything. And sure enough, I do, 2, 8, and anything. So I hope I've illustrated the point that you really can put anything pretty much into a list that you want and then index it and reference it in the way that we've learned. But if that object comes out and is something like a list, then you can use a second index to refer into that or a slice or whatever you want. Uh, and this process can continue. So you can have uh, lists within lists within lists and so on. So the basic idea is that a list in Python can contain any valid Python object. And uh, I've given you a little demonstration of, of what I mean by that and how complicated things might get. Now the next thing that I want to show you is there are functions associated with lists in the same way there were functions associated with strings that I showed you in an earlier video. So let me just show you that quickly. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen so there's not extraneous stuff on it. And uh, let me just remind you of what I showed you in the video on strings. If I create a string, then I can do things with that string like do x dot upper. And if I do that, it's going to return the string with everything capitalized. Or I can do x dot lower, which in this case won't do anything. So with strings, there are a variety of functions and I can actually get a list of those by typing x dot and then in the console, which I'm using here, the IPython console, there is something called code completion. So if I hit a tab, I can see 
all of the things that I can do with this, this um, string x. So let me get that list up again. For example, I can do something called capitalize. We'll see what that does. So capitalize. And what this does is it capitalizes only the first letter of the string. Now, there are a whole bunch of functions that are also associated with lists. So I've gone ahead and cleared the screen, and I'm going to create a list for the remainder of this demonstration that's a simpler kind of list than we looked at before. This list is only going to have integers, floating point numbers, and strings. So I'm just going to make something up for 6.7, the letter A, the integer 10, the very short word AN, another short word, another floating point number, and I'll show you that I can continue the definition of the list onto a new line by just hitting enter after I put in a comma. And you'll see that I get the, the continuation mark here. And so I can go ahead and put more things in. So I'm going to put in 4.5 as a string, and I guess I'll put in uh, one more thing. And now I can go ahead and close the list. So you can put list across multiple lines, and it's very convenient anytime you're defining something that is complicated. So I've now created the list. Let me go ahead and print it out just to check it. So there it is. And I'll, in fact, check its type. And it's a list. Now to find the functions associated with this list, I could go to the documentation and look up the uh, functions associated with lists, but one way to do it in the IPython console is to use what's called code completion. If I type x and a dot and then hit the tab character, I will get a list of functions. And I can move up and down in this list of functions using the up and down arrows, or I can also type the first letter of the functions, and I'll move to that section where, where there are functions with that letter. Now, I want to use a function called reverse. So I'm going to type in an R here, and you'll notice that I've jumped down to remove. That's not what I want. I want to go down further. There's reverse. And now if I just hit enter, it's going to enter the word reverse, so I don't even have to type it. And then I'm going to do open parentheses and close parentheses and go ahead and hit enter. Now when I print out x, you'll see that the elements of x are in exactly the reverse order to the, the way they were originally. So that's one function that I might want to show you about. Uh, let's look at one more, and that's the idea of sort. So if I type in x period tab and s, I'll move down to the functions that begin with s. It turns out there's only one of them, and it's already selected. So I'll hit enter and then I'll do open parentheses and I'm going to get a prompt and I'm going to move my mouse into that prompt. If I don't move my mouse into this prompt it goes away rather quickly but this function sort takes a variety of arguments and I'm going to show you just one of them the argument here that's also called reverse that is currently false. So we'll come back and do that in a second. Right now I'm going to go ahead and close the parentheses therefore accepting all of the defaults. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and then type X. And you'll see that I now get a sorted list of the elements that were in X. All the numbers come first. They're now in ascending orders. 4, 5.6, 6, 6.7, 6 8, 10. All of the strings come next. The string 4.5 comes before the string A, before AN, before AND, before BAT, before CAT. So that shows you how to sort a list, and this sorts it in place. The original ordering is now completely gone. If I had wanted a copy of it, I'd have to actually make a copy. 
Now let me show you how to sort the list in reverse order. I'm going to do X period tab S and enter. Open parentheses and now I'm going to do reverse equals true. Hit enter and then type out X again. And now you can see that I get the sorted list but in exactly the reverse order. All the strings come first starting with cat then bat then and then an a and 4.5 and then all of the numbers come next, starting with the biggest 10 and going all the way down to 4. So you can look at the other functions that are associated with lists and figure out what they do or read about them in the documentation. But I just wanted to show you that these functions are essentially attached in the sense that you'll understand more after the next video. Uh, but they operate on the list. So this concludes my demonstration on lists. There is one little thing that I want to show you before I close this video and I want to move the IPython console back to its normal spot. Let's see if it'll let me do it here. There it is. And that exposes the editor uh, that I was using earlier and in fact you can see the code from early in this demonstration where I had created a very complicated list. What I wanted to show you though is that the code completion that I showed you in the IPython console also works in this editor. So I can type X and then dot and then without having to type tab it will come up with a prompt of all of the things that I can do and then if I type S it will jump down to sort. Enter will enter the entire word sort. Open paren will lift the prompts of the, of the arguments. And you'll notice it's also created a close parentheses here. So then I can type in reverse for example equals true if I wanted the sort to be reversed. Then I can move to the end of the line and enter for my next command. So the key idea is that code completion works in the IPython console. It also works in the editor. If you get used to using it, it can make your coding very, very fast, both because it types words in for you, preventing typos, and also because it prompts you for what the correct things uh, are to put in. One comment that I'll make is that, the, that code completion does not occur in every kind of Python console. The IPython console is kind of special in that regard and it's one of the reasons why that's the console that we will probably be using most often.